Young people's experiences, ideas, choices, and preferences help shape the future of cities. This episode of the Bright Young Minds show on Future Cities Africa is with Kanyisa Mabala, Associate Quantity Surveyor and MEPF Lead for Africa at ACOM. Kanyisa, welcome. Can you give us a brief introduction to your role at ACOM and why it is important? Thank you so much for the opportunity. I think this is a really, really amazing initiative. And just to answer your question, so I am an MEPF Lead in the ACOM division which falls under the Department of the Measuring Studio. So what at large, what the measuring studio does is produce full of quantities in like mass production um, for the ACOM client. So we use ACOM as a client and we provide full of quantities, which is like desktop work for other ACOM offices. So what my role is within the measuring studio is focusing on the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire aspects of the development. And we just look at producing full of quantities and looking at installations in that regard. And yeah, so that's basically what my role is at the moment. I lead a team of eight at the moment, mostly young candidates between the ages of 21 and 29 so everybody is generally young they are yeah very youthful and everybody else within the measuring studio we are approximately 15 at the moment i say approximately because we are onboarding more people and the average age there is about 30 so we are quite a young group that is producing all these full of quantities and we do um, buildings like leisure hotels, we do villas, we do theme parks. So it's really interesting buildings that we get to tackle, not your average, you know, um, mall or office space. It's really nice because it opens up your mind and you really get to see what goes into the building. And yeah, that's basically my role at this present time. What are some of the major challenges that you face in the work that you do? And how are these challenges being addressed? In my current role, I think the challenges that we would be really faced with is obviously from a technological point of view. As you know, we're working now with ACOM Global. So that means we are exposed to technology that we may not necessarily be exposed to at university level. So having that jump is quite uh, prominent now and trying to close it or close that gap is what we're currently facing. So how we do that is we and have to understand the measuring systems that we're using on our projects. We plan for them so that we know exactly what goes into the building, we know exactly what needs to be carried out in terms of measurements. And then once we understand what is required from that officer's perspective, we can sit down, structure how we're going to approach the measurements, and then also go on and do training with the team. So what we do is we really just plan for the project, understand what needs to go into the bill, understand what the measurement system requires, how to approach it. We plan systematically and by means of a measuring list if I'm going to be technical about it. We carry out the measurements, we do training, and then afterwards we do a lessons learned on each project. So understanding how we should approach it next time should we get a project of a similar nature. And how we encourage that within our team is that we do uh, Monday trainings and then monthly trainings as well, which is a bigger training for the whole measuring studio. But on a Monday, we would select individuals where we thought, okay, they perhaps had the most contribution or perhaps even sometimes they had the less contribution. Sort of to just understand what their thought process is and how they applied themselves and how they would apply themselves in the future. And also those lessons at large help the rest of the team so that we know how to approach them next time. I understand that ACOM's city solutions help cities better prioritize projects, plan ahead, and provide for sustainable growth. This brings the term smart city to mind. And I'd like to know what is your definition of a smart city in an African context? My definition of a smart city would be in integrating information and technology to advance the city and also advance the efficiency of the city and just make it more convenient for everybody living within it. 
So we had, I think it was in, must have been in 2019, where uh, the president had the fourth industrial revolution, you know, seminar, and he gave, you know, goals of what South Africa wants to do in that regard and how he wants to integrate technology for the betterment and the improvement of urban areas. Um, but I still believe that there's quite a disparity or disconnect, you know, on the ground with regards to that, because we're still an emerging country. We're not like other developing countries where, you know, you can so easily integrate technology in a country where we have, you know, undeveloped areas with areas that still need to be developed. So you're trying to address the basic needs on the ground, right? And I don't know if I'm supposed to give my opinion on this, but like what I want to understand is how is government going to close that gap? It's sort of what we're experiencing now on a micro scale in my department is, yes, okay, we have learned a certain amount of information in university, but when we get to the workspace now, I'm really fortunate to be in a position where I work with models like firm technology that's that's really the forefront of my industry of quantity surveying it's you get a drawing you see it in 3d that's really nice for candidates coming in because you get to see a building from its entire like in its entirety and that's i think what students struggle with in the university space is that you get a drawing on 2d you sort of have to imagine it yourself so if you take it back into the national or, le or level or international level. I think there is, we're still trying to address basic needs and then over and above that, we're trying to incorporate technology. So how do we get the two to, to speak to each other? So I don't know if he's doing like all of it concurrently. And we've also realized that he's now incorporating um, internet, you know, and within a within location which is really great because it allows now students or people within the location to, uh, they have more access now to the internet, they can learn, that there's training, but what is that backed with? Why, why are we not having training on, you know, these technological uh, advancements? Why can't we get to a point where, okay, if we're going to do it concurrently, address basic needs, but what is the training that goes behind that? What are some, I would initiate like workshops as you can imagine, youth employment, yes, it's dropping now, now that the economy is sort of correcting itself, but I still think the youth is so innovative, and that's why we also like to have such a young team, because they bring new ideas, they're fresh, you know, they have different ways of, of different perspectives of addressing problems, which I think is really cool. It's just that I still believe that there's that gap that needs to be addressed, and I'm really interested to see how governments, because that's really where it takes place, is at a government level to address those issues. And then it translates to a municipal level. So I think in being here as well in Cape Town, that's been quite a nice eye opener for me because the municipality is starting to address those needs, right? So we have the integration of internet in not so developed areas, but I feel like we can still do a little bit more in that regard. A lot happening and so much more that can be done to ensure that we leave no one behind. How is a young African living in South Africa? Are you making sense of what's going on in the world and how do you keep sane? I sense that a lot of people who are my age are going to stay away from the news. The reason why I say that is because it's quite heavy at the moment. You know, fuel prices are going up every other day. People are rather despondent, and as a result of that, you know, they rather stick away from it. But how I sort of keep saying in this sort of environment is not only to read on the read the news or to keep up with current affairs, is just to interact with individuals, is to understand what their perspectives are on the situation and how to sort of come up with solutions that solve those situations. Um, and I think it's really important to have that and to start platforms because if, if no one is going to sort of do it for you, then we sort of need to come up with ways of doing it for ourselves. And it is 
challenging at times because it feels like you don't necessarily have a voice, but the youth does have a voice, you know, and the way that I, as I said, keep saying, is just really just bouncing off ideas of other people. And I think community is superbly important um, from attending galleries that uh, the youth are involved in, you know, to attending for example, that I was supposed to be speaking at a Johannesburg City Council platform to that. It's just human and people interaction because I really gain my energy from doing that. And that's literally how I keep saying. So this is how an extrovert keeps saying, I definitely need to get an introvert on the show as well to get their perspective. What is your vision for the future of cities and what is standing in the way of this vision and how can these hurdles be overcome? more youth need to get involved in the vision of a smart city. More people need to be trained, more people need to be exposed to what that means. And because we spoke about the youth contributing so significantly towards the South African population, and we tried to see a decrease in youth unemployment, I would encourage more workshops, more training, more inclusivity, more youth participation at local, global, every level. And I think a challenge that would come is obviously from the top. You know, if we're not seeing that happening from the top, if we're not seeing more participation from the youth from a governmental level, then it's going to be hard to translate it to a micro level. And I think that it needs that needs to take place. I think Government needs to have strategies and policies that we are aware that they do exist, but how are they being implemented, you know, on the ground? I think that needs to be spoken more on. So what would you say is the magic bullet to more community involvement towards this so-called smart city? In terms of cities, right, we obviously speak about their networks and how we're all interconnected, right? And we also understand that there is quite a bit of disparity in terms of low-income households and low-income, low-income households and, you know, your more moderate to higher income households. And there is a, a vast, you know, gap between that. I think I, I stand to say that that gap needs to be closed. And we're just trying to understand exactly how do we need to approach that? Whether it be industry specific, we can look at tackling it from industry specific because how do you eat an elephant? You know, you eat it bit by bit. You can't eat it in big chunks. So you need to break down the problem into smaller problems. You know, so if it, if for example, um, I can take a project that I've worked on in my specific industry, is that we were working on a mall within the location it's a Davidson mall it's a pretty cool mall because we noticed that even during COVID um, and after the hard lockdowns the footwork in that mall increased and we wanted to understand why so obviously we have internet in areas like Davidson but we don't necessarily have the resources and the facilities and where the resources and the facilities are in the mall, and that's why those malls attract more footwork, right? And then over and above that, while we understood that, okay, it's a mall within the township, we need to understand how you're going to get the community involved. Now, yes, it can bring a lot of friction because everybody wants to be involved on a specific project, but Addressing those issues in that manner, I think, helps because when we involve the local community, we you have labor within the community that is going to be in the project that now directly assists those households, right? And then over and above that, to bring a fun or a sort of an artistic element to the mall, we even sourced individuals within the community to come and paint murals, you know, on the mall to say, I've been a part of this project. I understand what happens in it. So it's giving a person a sense of purpose. 
And once you give someone a sense of purpose, they can feed into your vision. So if you have more community involvement, literally smart cities is all about people and people inclusion and people involvement and in giving them a sense of purpose other than waking up every day, not working, getting a grant. It's not going to give anybody a sense of purpose. And unfortunately, that's where South Africa finds themselves at the moment is that we're giving away grants. Yes, it, it helps, it's, but it's not necessarily sustainable. You know, how to motivate the youth is, I think, a very hard task, but it's something that needs to be done. It's a sense of purpose, I would say. And Yisa, in closing, what is your advice to young Africans to remain hopeful of the future? My advice, is, and I can only speak from my past experience, is that you need to understand what makes you you as an individual and not sort of try to mold according to society's perceptions or expectations of you, uh, perceptions or expectations of you, because I think that's where we get go wrong as a youth. Yes, okay, cool, I'm in this role, but I am Kanisa. What makes Kanisa? Understand what makes you you and understand how you stand out in, as an individual. So if I am a person who prefers to be behind the desk, what motivates me? Is it pushing ideas? Is it trying to be innovative? Or am I someone who prefers to be speaking or giving speeches or encouraging the youth? Or am I someone who is an autistic individual? Or am I someone who is mathematically inclined? So I think that it starts there. It's just understanding who you are and, and working on that and building on that. And also not giving up because I think Everybody sees our situation and thinks, oh, okay, cool. I, I don't necessarily think I can contribute in any way. But I think where there are challenges, there are solutions. And understanding how you as an individual can be a solution to a problem. So if we can see that, for example, the country is not necessarily where it should be economically, but you have an idea and you believe that it can contribute to the economy. And I always believe that small businesses thrive in environments like this because clients are not going to be necessarily looking at big organizations to supply needs. They're going to be looking at smaller businesses. And how do you now break that barrier and understand that you are going to be addressing a need? So it's understanding that yes, there are challenges, but also understanding that you can be a solution to every challenge. Well, not every challenge, but you can be a solution to a challenge and understanding what makes you you, what you enjoy and how you can contribute to society. A special thanks to Kanyisa Mabala for this insightful conversation on the Bright Young Minds show on Future Cities Africa. Youth is the future of African cities. 